What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, customer sent me his four player control panel, his computer, and now he's got a plug and play fully configured 10 terabyte hyperspin build. That is plug and play. <laughs> Alright guys, you know the joke, if you're not following me on Instagram, all the socials, if you didn't click that link tree description, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook is where you're going to find me. You could also send me a message, DM me, send me an email and I will answer. Yes, I am the one, I'm a one man team and I'm proud to say that. So, if you're not following me, what are you waiting for? All right, guys, get ready because I have a lot to talk about with this specific build here. Where you are right now, you're kind of looking at this like, Vic, this doesn't look like your regular by Vic. Like, why is the control panel so high? Why is the computer out here? What is happening? I'm really excited for this video because I do offer this service and it's a perfect time to explain this service. I do get a, a lot of questions, a lot of emails, and a lot of inquiries about what happened in this specific build here. So here's how it usually goes. Hey Vic man, I already have an arcade cabinet, dude. I already have a control panel with four players and a trackball. I already have a PC, but the one thing I'm really struggling to find is a really great image. I see your videos, dude, and I love it. And I, I What image are you using? Do you sell your image? And is it also like plug and play? And every time I see the word image, I kind of pull a Todd Tuck and I'm like, you said image. It's, when you say image, I already know that you're coming from like either an arcade punk or a modding group site and it's okay, but this is not an image. <laughs> Rewording it, people basically ask me, go, hey Vic man, I want your drive. Can I buy your drive and is it plug and play? And again, I appreciate all the questions, but it is a hard no. My drive, there's no such thing as a plug and play drive. I said it in my past videos, I'm going to say it again. There is no such thing as a plug and play drive. Everything needs to be configured, okay? I also just, I, I'm not afraid of doing drives alone. It's, it's kind of a nightmare. I kind of laugh when people get like these external hard drives and hey Vic, I bought somebody's like 60 terabyte build online and I have like eight external hard drives in my arcade cabinet now. Like I don't like our external hard drives because in my opinion they're bottlenecking. But basically what I'm trying to get at is no. I do not do drives. I will never do drives. They are never plug and play. I don't offer drive service. What I offer is you sending me your control panel, your PC, and I will configure it. Because the biggest thing that people ask is, is it plug and play? Like, if I get it, like, can I just like plug it in and start playing? And again, reverting back to like the original email. Hey Vic, do you sell a drive? Is it plug and play? Is it something where I could just kind of plug in and go? No, There's no such thing as a drive. Nothing is plug and play. It is not ready to go. Whereas in this situation, this is plug and play. This is ready to go right when the customer gets it in the mail. So yes, in all honesty, I need the control panel and I need your system. If you're gonna do like a Pandora's box, if you're gonna do a Raspberry Pi, I would still like that. Uh, I do actually have a Pandora box control panel coming up. Uh, the customer wants to use his Pandora box. I said, okay, I'm gonna need it. This way I could wire it accordingly. The, not to mention the, the family harness on a Pandora's box is short. I have to rewire it on. I need the hardware. I need whatever you're gonna use, I need it. That's the easiest way to explain it. In this situation here, he sent me his control panel and I'm gonna talk about the exact situation, but he sent me his control panel, he sent me the four Xbox One controllers, he sent me his PC, and he also sent me two aim track light guns with the recoil. And this right now, I sat down, took me a couple of weeks to get this down packed and done. This right now is gonna be mailed out, it's gonna go to the customer's house. All he's gonna really have to do is do the aim track um, calibration, and that's it. This will be a plug and play setup right out of the gate. So now people usually email me back and go, hey Vic, I don't understand, like, you just need the control panel? Like, what's so special about the control panel? I need the control panel, because honestly, if you look carefully, control panel and this is the heart of your system, along with any other controllers. Sidewalls and monitors, that's all aesthetic. You have that, I have that. 
I need this. This is what I need. I need to be sure that this is configured, wired, programmed appropriately. This way I can guarantee you a plug and play system. Hey Vic though, man, I have four Xbox One controllers and the kiddos are playing their Xbox though. I have them, like can you just like do, can you just have it configured and when I get it, it's gonna work with my, no. I want your Xbox controllers. This way, once you power on the Xbox controller, it's gonna connect, you don't have to worry about syncing. I, that's how I run, that's how I work. I want whatever you're gonna use, I need it in my hand. This way I know for sure it is flawless. Look at Project Canada. If I didn't have those six, eight Biddle controllers in my hand, I could already imagine the nightmare I'm gonna have. Because again, in my eyes and in this situation here, for me to be happy and to know that this is gonna go out the door and I fully did everything I could do, I have to configure everything. I have to configure each emulator accordingly to whatever controllers you plan to use. That is what I wanna do. That is how I run. That's how I do things. So basically, what am I getting at? Hey, Vic Man, I want a build. I already have everything. What can you do? You just gotta send me your control panel, send me all the controllers you're gonna do, and I will proceed and configure it, and then I'm gonna send it right back to you. I did have one guy that wanted to send me his whole entire arcade cabinet. You wanna pay for shipping and then ship it back? I'm all ears, I'm perfectly fine, but I don't know what it's gonna cost. That's another thing too, when it comes to the control panel, hey Vic man, it's gonna cost like, I don't know, 300 bucks to send it via UPS. That's on you, oh, I can't do anything about that. Will you send it back to me though? Yeah, but you're gonna pay to get it back. I, I'm not UPS, so. That's another thing that people really don't understand. If I have to pay out of pocket for like, if I if you need me to get four Xbox One controllers, I have to pay out of pocket, you have to reimburse me back. If it's gonna cost $300 to ship this control panel back, that's what it is. I, I don't include shipping in my pricing. I say it's a lot, I say it very big in like all my emails. Pricing is not included because right now, the way this got to me was in two boxes. The control panel, a very big homemade box, which I would probably do the same thing, but kind of like a Home Depot box or whatever. And then the PC was in its own box. That's how I got it. I always say it in all the replies and all the emails and all the inquiries, I always specifically say that shipping is never included in my numbers. Shipping is just, I, I have to get a freight company involved. The big thing though is that you're gonna pay the quote, the invoice that that freight company gives me. So if this got quoted for 352.47, that's what you're gonna pay. You're not gonna pay 400. I don't make. I don't add to the to the freight. I'm not trying to make a couple of bucks off of shipping. I will literally send you the invoice. I actually get three freight company quotes. You pick whichever one you want, and then you pay it. You actually pay the freight company directly. So that's how I do it when it comes to shipping. I don't know how much this costed to get to me. I don't know how much it's gonna cost to get back, meaning ship it to the customer, but. That is the deal that I do, and customer understands what he's gonna do. So basically, in summary, there's no such thing as drives, they are not plug and play, I don't do them. If you already have 90, 85, 100% of the stuff for an arcade cabinet, and you just need me to configure it, it's doable. You just gotta send me it, and I'll send it right back to you. So again, that's what I like about me, I'm very flexible, you just gotta inquire and let me know what you wanna do, and we'll figure out if I can get it done. Enough of the spiel, enough of the talk. I probably was repeating myself a couple of times. I actually shot this a couple of times. I wanted to make sure I just got my point straight across. Let's talk about what's going on with this specific build and this specific customer scenario. Now let's get into the nitty gritty on this specific build that we have here. I normally want to tell you like off the bat the specs and what's going on, but I feel like I should give you the backstory on this before we kind of get into the final details. So today's December 10th. I got an email beginning to mid-November for argument's sake to keep things simple. I got an email from this customer November 10th. It goes, hey Vic man, I see your content. I love the videos, dude. I'm inquiring about a buy Vic 55 inch, four player, 40 terabyte arcade cabinet for me and the kiddos for Christmas. And I put two and two together. I was like, this guy is trying to get a fully spec'd out machine for Christmas and I only have a month to do it, it's physically impossible for me to do that. I have a wait list on these, so I hit him right away. I did tell him the price, but I told him, I said, dude, if you're looking for a Bivik cabinet in a month, I can't, I can't do it. I, there's, it's, I couldn't do it. So he's like, Vic, man, I, I, need a, I need an arcade cabinet for Christmas though, like, what do you suggest? So I said, I would 
suggest Game Room Solutions. So if you are looking carefully, yes, this is the 43 inch Game Room Solutions control panel. I will still suggest Game Room Solutions. It's probably fine, especially if you are like on a budget. If you need something costly, cost effective, Game Room Solutions does the job. I still use Game Room Solutions for my marquee prints. We have no bad blood, but we're perfectly fine and it's great, awesome. I suggested Game Room Solutions and I told them while we were emailing back and forth, I was like, honestly bro, you have to probably order this cabinet ASAP. You know, Thanksgiving was coming up. I'm pretty sure GRS and their Christmas orders and their specials, like they're gonna get piled up. So like you right now have to realize you only have a month to get like this done. Vic, it's December 25th, this Christmas. Yeah, but like in my eyes, it's it's a month. I would rather give myself 10 days, you know, December 10th and then December 20th, you know. It, that's how I was thinking about it. So I told him, listen, get a Game Room Solutions cabinet. So he was looking at it. He did like the pricing. Then we were talking about like the PC side of it. And uh, again, when I mentioned the pricing on this, it was like, oh, Vic, oh, what could we do? So I said, get a Pandora's box. Uh, then he went into like, no Vic, I want light guns and I want a trackball and I was like, okay, now you need a PC. So I gave him a price, you know, for a PC and I already knew he needed a Game Room Solutions control panel. So it's just like this scenario that I said in the beginning, he's going to send me the control panel. Now the big thing is, what are we going to do about the PC? He apparently had a bunch of PCs from work lying around and the specs on this is pretty decent. I'm going to get, I'm going to go through the specs on what happened. And basically what we got right now is we do have a 43 inch four player game room solutions control panel with a 10 terabyte HPZ i9 16 gigs of RAM running a 3060 Ti in it, 10 terabyte hyperspin build. So now keep in mind again, the customer had a PC at his job site. So I had to wait, we had to wait a day. Uh, he went the next day to find out the specs on it because I told him, PC specs are important. I don't know what's in it. Does it have a graphics card in it? He was really looking to play like PS2 and again, the light gun games and all that. PS2, you need a graphics card. So he goes to the job site. It has an i9. I've never experienced this PC before. It's an HP. In my eyes, it's an HP version of an Optiplex. Um, so it's an HP. This has an i9. It had eight gigs of RAM. I told him bump it up to 16. So he got another RAM stick. So it's got 16 gigs of RAM. And the big thing I was telling him was like, does it have a graphics card? And he goes, yeah, Vic, it says that it's like an Intel uh, graphics card. And I was like, there's no such thing as an Intel graphics card. That means that it's in internal, like it's a, it's on the motherboard. It doesn't have a graphics card. So I was suggesting a 3060 Ti. You could also do a 1660 if you want. But the hard thing is that me suggesting that, I don't even know if the PC is going to accept it. You know, that's like some people getting a Dell Optiplex for 100 bucks on, on eBay. And they try to put a 3060 Ti in it and it doesn't boot. That's because there's not enough power in the power supply or there's no PCIe slide in your motherboard. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that gets into it. So it's very difficult for me to even talk or suggest things when I've never experienced like this type of computer at all. I even actually asked him to send me pictures of the motherboard just to make sure that this could even accept a graphics card. I mean, it had an i9 in it. I was like, wow, that's that's you know not like your standard Dell Optiplex. So basically he covered the computer. When it got into the terabyte count, I said, you're gonna have to count like the SATA connections. You know, some PCs have like eight SATA connections and some have like one or two. So luckily it went from a 40 terabyte build to a 10 terabyte build because I also thought to myself, I only have a month. So he went to my website, he went on the Excel sheet and he basically was filling out the systems and his systems count came out to 10 terabytes. And I was like, awesome dude, let's rock. So PC was all set. He's gonna get a 10 terabyte drive and you know, I like my internal drives. I don't like externals. I feel like it's bottlenecking. So he got the PC side set up, right? Then it came time for the Game Room Solutions order. I was gonna help him. I said, I'll help guide you, don't worry. He actually screen recorded his Game Room Solutions order. He did exactly what I said. I suggested the eight button layout, six button layout for players three and four, eight buttons for players one and two. He wanted a trackball, so I did suggest to get the trackball on it. And I told him to get the dedicated four-way because why not? The dedicated four-way is just such an easy add-on. Like, put it, just just hit the, the dot, right? Then, and again, I'm talking now about Game Room Solutions. We're gonna, this part right here is we're gonna talk about Game Room Solutions and the experience that we had with it, okay? Game Room Solutions, then you go down the list and you could pick like what buttons you want. He wanted LED buttons, cool. I thought we were gonna go with the Chrome. He got these regular style ones. Um, it went into now the encoder, right? Cause you could do the buttons and the encoder, right? He goes, hey Vic, there's an option for USB encoders or an iPack. And I was like, I don't do iPacks. 
don't do iPad, do the USB encoders. Now, in the picture, I could obviously see it's like those dragon rises, like the ones you get on like Amazon. Uh, so I said to him, I said, in the end, you could put it in the notes, try to ask for a Zinmo. If he didn't get a Zinmo, it's okay because I have like four of them on hand. I could cover it. Like, I, I got that. You know, Zinmo's 20 bucks. I have it. If I have to use mine, I'm going to charge you for it, but at least I have it so you don't have to actually place the order with it. So he's going down the list. He's picking his stuff. He's got the artwork and all that. He confirms, and again, all this, he did a screen record, right? Confirms his, his shipment, all done, all said and done. I said, great, dude. Contact me once the control panel gets to you, right? The next day, he gets an email from Game Room Solutions. Game Room Solutions hits him and he goes, hey, man, we see that you picked the four-player admin buttons, but because you picked USB encoders instead of the iPad, we removed the four admin buttons and we already cut and made the artwork for your panel. So he, messaged, he sent me the screenshot and he's like, Vic, what does this mean? And I was like, admins? Like, you don't, you don't, the, the... Sorry, I didn't answer that. So, like I said, I was like, they removed the admin buttons, like, because you picked different... I, it, the whole thing was like, I was like, reply back that you need the admin buttons. Like, I always suggest you need the admin buttons. So I actually posted this to, like, the Facebook group. And like, Vic, you don't really need the admin buttons. You could just do, like, uh, button combos, like shifts. And I was like trying to explain to a customer to exit, you have to shift and I do that with Raspberry Pi builds and they, they're like lost. So I need the admin buttons, I said. I was like, tell them you requested admin buttons. You know, it doesn't make sense. Why would they, they removed the admin buttons. And when I said that they cut, they cut the panel. They cut the panel already, laid the artwork already. So, you know, the customer is saying the game was like, listen, I, I my builder is Big VP. I said to him, I was like, say my name. You know, maybe, you know, if they see my name, they're like, oh shit, it's Vic. I order stuff from them. So he goes, hey man, uh, he goes, listen, Vic VP is my builder and he states that he needs the admin buttons. I picked admin buttons. Please send me the deck with admin buttons. Game Room Solutions now emails him back. He goes, well, listen, Vic could call us if there's any issues. But if you need us to recut a panel with the admin buttons and do the artwork and all that, we're going to need $180. And again, customer sent me this email. He's like, you know, he just took a screenshot of it. And I said, I was like, bro, you know what, man? Just say, forget it. Forget it and just get the control panel now. Like, just, just get in the mail. So he's like, yeah, but Vic, man, I'll, I'll pay that $180. If, I, if, if you need the admin... I said, dude, you know what? I'm going to cut the admin button. I'm going to bring you in closer and you're going to see I cut the admin buttons on this because $180 for four buttons, I get I get what, you know, Game Solution has to make a whole new deck and you can't put the the router and the CNC on the, I get it, but my only argument was like, why did it get removed? I don't know. So, um, I, it, that was that. Was that. I was like, I said to the customer, I was like, you want to you pay $180? Bucks? Pay me $180. Bucks. I didn't do that though. We didn't, we didn't do it. I said, listen. Here's my thing. You're gonna send me the panel. I'm gonna try to cut it. My only fear with these panels is the plexiglass. If I crack the plexi, you can't you can hate me. Then we'll talk to Game of Solutions and place the order. He's like, Vic, you know what, man? That's a great idea. I appreciate it. I said, I'm gonna try. Like, let me, let me try. If I crack the plexi, you're okay already with paying $108. Let me just at least try. Let's save you some money because that's how, that's my mentality. I, I put my myself in your shoes. Like, I already have a bad taste of like, why didn't the control? And that's the hardest thing in my situation. I suggested Game Room Solutions, and then Game Room Solutions pulled this. And you know, now I feel I feel bad. I'm like, I suggested, and that's kind of like difficult for me. You know, somebody could be like, Vic, you suggested this company, and now my side panels are two pieces. I'm like, oh shit. Like, I can't, I can't talk. You know. I, anyway, like I said. And the other thing also, because um, the customer asked Game of Solutions for the Zinmo, I said, ask them, can they swap the encoders for a Zinmo? Give you two Dragon Rises and one Zinmo. And whoever's there on the email is like, no, you have to pay extra for the Zinmo. So I said, dude, I have them. I have like four of them. You just pay me, don't pay them. I have them. So anyway, long story short, about a week later, 
I get this sent to me. I get the control panel, I get the buttons, I get the joysticks, I got the sandwich sticks on it, and I got this base here. This base though did come to me flat packed. So I, we were going back and forth on pictures and uh, I told him how many cam locks it needs and there you go. So he sent me all this, it was basically flat when he sent it to me, but now obviously it's not gonna be flat. It looks like this. Now take a look at the top of the panel. Yes, that right there. This right here is a hundred and eighty dollars. Granted, yes, I understand it's a hundred dollars for the whole new deck, but I just can't fathom having a customer pay for a whole new deck for full. I mean, granted, yes, as you can see here, I did the best that I could. Vic, the spacing isn't the same like the others. He has four admin buttons. That's like the main thing out of it. I got it lined up here with the start and the coins. It is in the middle here, so I did the center line here and then branched out. But yes, that was it. And again, cutting the plexi, I have a, a drill press that went very slow. I actually did four layers of painter's tape, uh, one on the top, one on the bottom, one on the top uh, of the actual vinyl itself, and then I also did the bottom so it doesn't blow out, but yes. Um, just looking real quick at the panel though, the one thing that I was kind of intrigued about and checking out is that I was looking at, and you see it in the camera, this. This is what really got my eye. Um, from my understanding, that Game of Solutions TV is going to be right here. So I feel like player three and four is close. Um, but then again, like you can't, unless you, you know, you, if you brought them down here, it's got to go wide. I don't know. There's, there's a lot going on. I've never seen in person the four player panel. I also know that there, and it's also a preference. I've seen this argument in other arcade forums. Players three and four is on a slant. So this Sanwa, whereas this is going like straight up and down, this is on a slant here. Um, it's just, I feel like I'm kind of close to the screen, but I don't know. Either way, the only other complaint I have is the dedicated four-way location. Um, it's just to the left. You know, you have so much room, you could, you know, put it here. I don't know. Uh, other thing was that they did use, uh, he did get the GRS trackball. Nice trackball, not too bad, but it's missing the feature of the left mouse click. Uh, you can't do left mouse click with this. Um, but yeah, that, that right there is 180 bucks. So there's that little story that we had with Game Solutions. Um, essentially, he didn't have to send me the bottom base. I only needed the control panel. But in this certain scenario, he also has aim tracks, but he bought the aim tracks with the recoil in it. It needs a 24 volt power supply. So to keep things clean, I did also put the two female adapter pieces for the recoil of the aim track. So I kind of told him, I said, listen, I need that, number one. He said, you know what? I'm gonna just send you the whole bottom and I'm just gonna send it to him complete, just like this. Uh, also keep in mind that when I do the, the wiring, and all, and this was sent flat. Like, you know, if you were gonna send me just a control panel, it's not totally flat. Once I put like the joysticks, you know, you're up two inches here and then there's also another two to three inches of wiring underneath and the trackball is also deep, so now it's no longer a flat box. He said, Vic, you know what, just build it for me. This way, when I get it, I pop it right in. And that's what we got. So it's kind of crazy. This deck is deep. Uh, I built the, the bottom of it, and I was like, oh, I have this. I'm building this cabinet right now. It's going to be a Pandora's box build. Uh, I was like, oh, let me try to put this deck on my, my, my by Vic, and it just went. It's so deep. Uh, mine are not that deep at all. Uh, I, I had actually put like shims on it. I put like four blocks of wood here just to keep it up for video purposes. Somebody on Instagram saw it because I took a picture and they're like, why is that taller than that one? And you know, why is it inconsistent? I was like, this isn't my control panel. Uh, somebody sent me this control panel. So a little confusion on Instagram, but easy setting on. Anyway, customer went and filled out the build your own drive uh, Excel sheet I have on my website. That is if you're gonna let me configure the PC. That's not to do a drive. I might see the confusion on that, but I'll fix that. Uh, but basically you could tell me the systems that you're looking for. That helps me determine what type of PC specs you need. And it also determines how many terabytes you need. So he filled it out. His came out to 10 terabytes, but he was like, Vic, you have like this thing called like Sega ring edge. I don't know what that is. What's Tato type X. I was like, Oh, that's arcade stuff. He's like, okay, no, Vic, I, I want that. He was like, take out stuff that you don't think I would want. I was like, no, mm -hmm. I don't know you, like I don't know what you think. 
So I was like, you know what? I see you did like N64 Japan. He's like, yeah, you could take out like the Japan stuff. I said, okay, cool. So I did notice though he didn't have PC games. Uh, and he's like, you know, Vic, it's all right. I said, you know what? What I'm removing from like the other files that you don't need, I'll give you a handful of PC games. I know I don't like doing this. I like to give you complete stuff because I have to modify databases, but I like to help. So I said to those, you know what? I'm gonna give you a handful, mostly the fighters. You got like Mortal Kombat 11, we got Street Fighter 5 on it. And then we got a couple other arcade stuff like Mission 1985, the All-Star Brawl with Nickelodeon, TMNT, you know, stuff that I could fit, I squeezed in it. Honestly, the drives are very packed. Um, I probably only have, and I never do it that low, there's probably 20 terabytes left on the C drive and 30 terabytes left on the D drive. So he again did a one terabyte SSD and a 10 terabyte hard disk drive. Big thing to keep in mind though, 10 terabyte hard disk drive, it's really translates to like a 9.1, 9.2 terabyte. So you lose 800 gigs. So just keep that in mind. Um, that also then I was like, you know, maybe one Forza. So I basically was deducting stuff and trying to add stuff just to help them out. So as you can see, like for racing, there's one, two, three, there's only three racing games. That's it. Forza, Hot Wheels, the new kart racers. That's it. Uh, you want more? You're going to need more terabytes. That's all I could really say with it. But uh, all in all, pretty solid. The only one thing is his PlayStation 2 library is not entirely complete. Um, I had to do that because I ran out of room. Uh, but he was okay with it. He's perfectly fine. He's like, as long as I got like the bangers, like make sure I got all the Grand Theft Auto. I was like, yeah. I mean, I think it's, like, I don't even know how many PS2 games I have, like 2,000. It's, you're probably missing like 100. So it's not that detrimental. But all in all, pretty, pretty cool stuff. It works. It's awesome. He doesn't have the option of installing Steam. Um, that's my fault because it's maxed out. Like he can't put any more stuff on his drive. So that's like the only one thing, but he can always buy another hard drive and put steam on it. Now let's check out real quick and we're going to end the video. Let's check out the aim tracks with the recoil. I've never experienced them. So let's load it up. All right. So I got the aim tracks here. So these are again, the recoil aim tracks. It's got a thick wire on it for video purposes. And somebody's going to see it in the promo video. Um, I can't connect these to this USB port here because the wire isn't long enough to go to the PC here. In his cabinet, it will be long enough, but in this situation, it was too short. So I plugged the aim tracks directly into the PC here. So I don't know if somebody's gonna see that in the promo video, but yes, that's what it is. Uh, again though, he does have the power inputs here and I give him these mail to mail. So basically you just kind of put those in and the aim tracks and it'll work. Aim track does not give you the power supply when you buy these guns. So you do have to buy two 24 volt power supplies to get them to work. Now get this, right? I got them. He sent me everything in one shot. So I had everything, right? And I did my testing. I did my configuring. Everything was good, but I didn't configure it with the power in. Like I was just doing it as a regular aim track, not with the recoil. Today, just now before I was filming, I was like, I'm getting ready for Instagram. Let me get, you know, my, my videos ready and all that. I put the power supplies in. Gun one was perfect. Gun two, when I put the power supply in, there's a little blue LED showing you that there's power. The LED would go out. It actually went very dim. And I messaged the customer. I said, hey, I'm giving you a heads up. There's an issue with one of the guns that for some reason I was, I was trying to get it to recoil. It wouldn't even recoil. I said, I'm giving you the heads up, but I'm going to open up this gun because I opened them up before for the Bluetooth. You can't do Bluetooth with this, but I've had my experience of opening up the gun. I was like, let me just open up the gun. Let me just see what happens. Sure enough, I opened up the gun and there was two wires touching inside of the gun. I fixed it and now we don't have that power issue anymore. So I'm in the gun game wheel. Let's just launch the house to the dead. And it's pretty cool. Got a nice little click. I've never experienced the solenoid recoil aim track. For the money, it's a cool feature. It's nice. You know, again though, keep in mind, when you get it from Ultimark, you're buying just a gun. Doesn't give you power supplies. I think he spent like, I don't know, 25 bucks a power supply, and you need two of them. So, without further ado, we'll coin up. I already have coins, but might as well press start. We'll press start on player two. I always mark the bottom of the guns, the butt of the gun. This is player one, this is player two. 
and that's your solenoid. So it's pretty cool. Uh, it's got a, it, it's like your standard solenoid that you would actually find in some V pins. I gotta reload. Oh. But it's decent. My only thing that I've researched on is that apparently the solenoids kind of burn out fast and also you can't hold it down like a jolt. You, it won't go like, it won't do that. You have to, you have to hit the, the triggers many times. So all in all, for the money, it's worth it. And again, these are hardwired aim tracks. These aren't wireless like my other video that you saw me before complaining about with the wireless. You can't do wireless two player and you cannot do wireless with the recoil kit. So that's just a hard no on that. But all in all, not too bad. As you can see, this right here is going to be sent out fully configured plug and play. That's it. I got to experience now the aim track recoil. They're pretty cool. It's not a jolt and it's not a gun for IR. So you get what you pay for. Uh, but all in all, there you guys have it. We have the 43 inch four player game room solutions control panel, really the full arcade kit. Customer has that. Four Xbox One controllers, two aim track um, with the recoil light guns, i9, 16 gigs of RAM, 3060 Ti, 10 terabyte hyperspin build, fully configured. The only thing the customer is gonna have to do on his end is go to the little aim track utility thing and calibrate his guns to his screen. This is a 55 inch screen, he's got a 43 inch. You just gotta run the calibration, just one time. One calibration and you're set. And that right there, my friends, is a plug and play build. Killing it, that's it, next.